I knew everything except one thing. I have never seen this thing ever in the history of Nickelodeon. I have no idea what in the world this thing is. <laughs> and I now have to find out what this thing is. What is that? <laughs> Who is that? What is that TV thing? Keegan. Welcome to Splat Attack, a 90s podcast honoring the slime-filled past. I'm your rebellious art student, Jordy. <laughs> and I'm your goody two-shoes teacher's pet, Alex. And Jordy... Yes? With school now in session, I want to do something different. Uh, every year it's the same thing, and I'd like to shake things up. Do you have anything in mind that we could do differently? Well, there's one special sweepstakes that took place every year uh, in the 90s, actually, uh, that shook things up big time. Uh, we could see about maybe bringing that one back. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Are you referencing the Nick takes over your school sweepstakes? That's the very one. Uh, picture this. You're just like an average 90s kid. Uh, you decide to send in a postcard to Nickelodeon Studios on like a random day, right? And then like flash forward a few weeks later and uh, Nickelodeon stars would arrive on a school bus, uh, transform your gym and slime your teachers and have like an all out concert in like the gym with all the students. Could you, <laughs> could you even imagine? Well, you're absolutely right. That That could absolutely be a very unique experience uh the the sweepstakes itself it ran from 1988 to 2001 and not not a single one of these were the same they were all very unique to each specific year and we've gotten to talk with brianne who won in 1993 we've gotten to talk with mallory who won in 1998 and both of the their experiences had their own special touches just to them. And today we are covering our third Nick Takes Over Your School experience. And, and I see our guest is arriving uh, in the school bus now. And coming off the school bus, everybody, this is Jennifer, who was the winner from 1995. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Hello. Hello. Well, tell me, uh, tell me the story. How did, how did all this get started and what was it like? So I will start you off with what, how, I found out, right? So sitting in the house, mom gets a phone call and I can't, this is what, I wish she would have stayed up for this, but she, um, I'm pretty sure how it goes down is they call the house and let us know that we won because I remember, but then you have to get permission from the school. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's from what we've heard from the other two winners, that tracks. Okay, okay. But I'm pretty sure my mom told me like straight away that that that, that we won. And we had a a good a principal that liked liked control. So but you know, it still it still happened. Like the whole process, like how they came, they all came down and checked out the school. I can't really remember all the details, but they came down, checked out the school um asked us like oh I remember the big the big discussion was what what is the live music going to be what's the what who is going to come and we were like green day green day I want green day <laughs> well can you imagine I don't know who must have said no to that if it was green day or if it was the school or I'm not really sure so I remember sitting in this room like a big table is probably just like a conference room and all the adults and the principal and all the Nickelodeon people at the table. And, and someone's like, well, just, we, we can't have green day. I'm so sorry. Cause they really Nickelodeon was like, this is your day, anything you want. And that is not something I was used to. I, I, wow. I, I was shy and I was very, very famous at that time, you know, with the whole school and 
I don't know. I, I really felt like we really needed the Green Day to come in. And they're like, well, tell tell everyone what, what the rumor is. There's another rumor. And I remember the rumor, but the rumor, we didn't want the rumor. Like, and it was all, it was all for one, which is really, no, the boys to men, boys to men was the rumor. And I don't think anybody really wanted boys to men. It was like a joke or something. I can't really remember, but I said that and they were, Nickelodeon was like, oh, this is what they want which really wasn't what we wanted, but they were trying for it, and I didn't know what to do, so they weren't able to get them, but we got all for one, and I don't know. <laughs> that was just like that one moment that I remember kind of vividly for some reason. It was like very intimidating, you know, like all these adults, and I think they're trying to let the kid be all powerful, but it was intimidating a little bit in there. Yeah, because the, even then, yeah, you had a lot of freedoms, I'm sure, but still having to, pro well, promising that you could have any musical guest you wanted. <laughs> not, they probably had just a couple in mind of who they could get. And, uh, and then we're trying to gently nudge. Well, what about this one? Since we can't get this one. I know, I know, I know. I don't think it was the fact that they didn't have Green Day or that Green Day wouldn't do it. I'm pretty sure it was the principal. I'm like almost certain, like, no, that's not going down. Maybe not. He was pretty hip. He liked good music. So I don't know. Maybe not. When did the school find out? As as in the, the school body? When were they told? I have no idea. You know that? I have no idea how everyone found out. They must have made an announcement because... It didn't happen till April, which is almost the end of school. And I think they let, they probably let us know around February or something like that. Oh, wow. That's quite a notice. I did. I I mean, maybe I told some people, but I don't, I don't know, but it was in the news. I mean, it was a big deal. And for many months beforehand. Is uh, from what I've heard from some of the other ones, it, it was a bit of an arduous process but it wasn't months out it may have been like a few weeks but it's, I've... A, ki it's a kid memory so you know they might be a little off in timing <laughs> yeah no that's that's completely understandable but i can also see them taking the time to plan this out to make sure everything is going to work the way they need it to i can totally understand that too and it could have been also um i i don't know but nickelodeon may have worked around the school's schedule also. I mean, I'm pretty sure that had a lot to do with it. Because something my mom kept mentioning, like, well, you know, they don't like control getting taken away and they're taking the school away from them. So I'm I'm sure there was there was some planning involved with when they were allowed to do it, which may have been why it took so long. We had the mayor there, we had everybody there. Yeah, that's a first. Uh, with this being my, our third one, I've never heard of the mayor being involved. That's really kind of cool. It was cool. Do you remember how often did you send like a whole bunch of postcards or did you just send one and hope that you get lucky? So this was the big funny part when 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 you win, you get to make the commercial for the next year. Right. Yeah. So they have a they have a script for you. Until you pull up with a busload of Nickelodeon celebrities and... Nick takes over! Nick takes over! Nick, Nick takes, takes over! over. Oh. Nick takes over your school! In the script it says, I sent in a postcard and I won! Won! And then it was something like that. But I told them I didn't send a postcard in. I was actually in Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. And at the end of the tour, you know, when there's like a little, like, fill this little card out and you might win thing. They had like a pad of paper at the end of the tour and we filled them out there. It's about that big, if my memory is correct. And those big five gallon barrel things that you have, there was a few of those blue things in there and you popped them in there. And I told them that's how I, I didn't send a postcard. I 
build one of those things out. And they're like, well, listen, you're just going to have to lie for the commercial. <laughs> but, you know, that's actually, that's actually how I didn't even fill out a, a postcard. And you just filled out one of those at Nick Studios? You didn't have your family all right now? So I remember only filling one out yesterday when I was talking to my sister and I was like, hey, maybe you should come on this this podcast with me. So, you know, we have like some extra, you know, different experiences. And she's like, I don't think you want me to go on there because don't you remember you made me fill out like a million of those? And maybe <laughs> one of those were mine and something like that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember that at all. But in my memory, it was one and it's still like mind boggling because it was, I'm telling you, it's one little piece of paper. So I'm trying to picture like, I'm trying to picture it all these years. I've never, I still can't understand it. So all the postcards, big, thick pieces of paper, then tiny little skinny, tiny paper. And you reached into there and grabbed my name. Like <laughs> out of everybody, little old me, <laughs> how can it happen? How can it happen? So this is my thing in life. Now you never know. Just, you never know. It's got to give it a shot. Somebody's got to win. <laughs> exactly. Might as well be you. Unless it's the McDonald's lottery. Apparently you don't win that. <laughs> yeah. So that all those. So as we're, you know, we're getting, we're going through, everyone knows, like we talked about, I don't remember how everyone found out, but everyone's talking. So my business teacher, Mr. Burton, was like the biggest fan of this whole idea of Nickelodeon coming. He was so excited. He was talking about swirlies. He's like, they're going to serenade you on stage. I didn't even know what serenaded me. I didn't even know what that meant. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever. Damn straight. They sure as heck did do that to me. A <laughs> little serenade you. Yep. <laughs> Earlier, you said you were a very shy person. Were you nervous during that whole thing? Was you like, I just want to get off the stage? Yes, it was like, you're sitting in the stage. So I had to backtrack because I'm like jumping way too far ahead, right? Way too far ahead. But I just remember him saying that all year long or year, a few months. I'm not sure of the timeline there to get back to me on that one. But uh, so we've we've got all the prep time in between. And people have come out and they've looked and surveyed everything. Now it's 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 showtime. 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 I'm gonna have makeup. I'm gonna have makeup and hair for you. The bus is gonna show up at your house. We're gonna drive you over there. Right? The the sisters can come, the mother can come, the dad could come, but he had to work. And then so we go my parents, I mean. Yeah. And yeah. so they show up at the house and, you know, I got my, I forgot, I left my retainer in my mouth, you know, like, and I um, got my hair all frizzy because I think they're going to do my, my makeup and my hair. Well, they did my makeup, but, and like all day, all day, makeup, 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 like <laughs> such a, it was such a crazy day for me. So they picked us up at the house. It was very exciting. Like all the celebrities are on the bus, like. This is exciting, right? You show up at the school, the entire school is outside with their lime green shirts on. We have the big orange flag. I think it was, oh, I think it was Fillmore running out. I mean, it. this is like the cameras, the media. This is intense, intense day and very, very, very cool. And so most of the school still has to go to school for like a tiny bit of the day until the big show, but not, not me. I was able to like, I mean, this was so, I was like this, like a goody goody child. Right. And then they're like, you can do whatever you want. You, I was like, do I need a hall pass? They're like, you don't need any hall pass. Go, go. go. I like, oh my God. So it's like, you know, they have, all this beautiful spread for all of the celebrities and the acts and stuff like all this food and we were we could go and eat eat and ate anything we wanted and pictures and constantly interviews all day with the newspapers and stuff and then 
But I think, yeah, they had a guts obstacle course set up in our gym. And I wanted there, I kind of wanted to check it out. And I guess it just, it didn't get into my head. Like this is not only Nickelodeon day, but it was like my day. And that is like just something that I just, it was hard for me to like grasp that concept. And if there was a line to get in there like forever. And they're like, you go to the front of that line and you can do it as many times as you want. You know, it's like, okay, I guess <laughs> I feel a little bit bad, but okay, you know, like running through that course. And it was like a really fun day. Yeah, that's gotta be just like something out of a movie. It was supposed to be an outside thing, like for the whole school, but it poured down rain that day. Like oh, it was oh, this oh. monsoon. And um, so they moved it into the auditorium. The auditorium could only fit like one grade. And since I was in seventh grade, they only let the seventh graders be like live in there. And everyone else was on their monitors, which I'm sure back then was like a little TV, you know, like in the corner <laughs> of the room. But for us and me, especially, I was like in the front row with my family. And um, yeah, I mean, they started, I think they started the whole thing off. The mayor was there. They declared it Jennifer Lang and Nickelodeon Day. Here is your whatever, all this plaques. And they presented me with the check and they presented the school with like a $5,000 check and like a media library. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Just on Monday, I, I, I was, I, my daughter just started at that school this, this week. And so I, I got the opportunity to walk through the school that I hadn't been in since probably like 1996 when I graduated from there. And it is exactly the same. They're having their 50th year anniversary this year. And I did not see one single Nickelodeon thing in there. And I was thinking, really? Like, where's my plaques? Where's the plaques at? <laughs> this, is a, this is a momentous day. There needs to be something to commemorate it. <laughs> How could you forget? <laughs> That when Mr. Burton left, that I think they'll, I don't know, maybe I don't know. I'm just joking around, but um, it's really, it's like a time warp, you know, being back in there mm -hmm. and then connecting with you guys so, so perfectly timed. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that, that show that they put on, they had the Wall of Fame there. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I, I was able to pick teachers that could get slimed. Um, we had such a great, um, Everybody was, was having fun. Like I remember the bowling ball, like my math teacher was in the bowling ball. My geography teacher was getting pied in the face, but everyone was having fun. Like the big slime at the end, I think was both of the PE teachers. And then, and then the, um, um, the, the vice principal who was, he was just an amazing person. And then of course, like the principal in between, um, who, what's the, um, what is that group? The these guys. You're you're talking about Alfred Carr and uh Seymour Green from Roundhouse. Yes. From oh, yeah, yes, from yes, Roundhouse. the Roundhouse gang. And they they had him doing like a dance up there and talking and they squeezed in there and they like, oh yeah, we're like an Oreo cookie now. They were making some jokes. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. Those two guys are still doing that. Yeah. Uh, that they are an entertainment duo and they're on cruise ships and they're still doing stuff like that to entertain people. Like that's their whole career now. Yeah, they got the talent for it. That was good, funny stuff. Yeah, and then so then that was the whole day, right? Like great show, all the entertainment. And then at the very end of the day, everyone went home and we did the commercial we did the commercial takes and that's when i finally got to get slimed at the very end of the day uh, and that slime was freezing cold <laughs> <laughs> was you excited about doing it oh yeah absolutely it was because like you know how many takes you do and then they're like this is gonna be the one this is the one we're gonna we're gonna pull the bucket who was the celebrities that were there? Uh, obviously, we know that Alfred Carr and, and Seymour Green. Who else was there? We had Keenan there. See? Okay. As a baby. Hey. Oh. There we we had little tiny Pete. Is he yep. in that one? Yeah, he's yeah, in that yeah. picture. Too. Little Pete. He was in there. We had um, 
Is it her name, Alyssa, from all that we had? Mm -hmm. Alyssa Reyes. That's this one right here. Yeah, that's got all of them, I think. Oh, that's wow. that's Alisa. Yeah, you got, got Keenan. Yeah, Alisa. That's Alisa, Keenan, Danny Tamborelli. And then Wiener, Wienerville's in the back there. Mark Wiener. Oh, okay, we got and, Mark uh, Wiener. And Phil Moore, and then Alfred and Seymour. And then the, the wall of fame in the background. Yeah, the wall, wall of stuff yeah. from, from What wall Would You Do? Yeah, yeah, what would you do? My very, <laughs> my very sweet um, geography teacher got totally creamed with pie in her face. She was like the first person that let me babysit her her babies. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It was wild, wild. And then even after, even after that happened, we went up to Universal um, just afterwards and. We were in the line and they were felt like the what had happened and they made their own like little commercial thing was like in the line when you're waiting was on the screens and they let us in there. They let us go backstage. We got to see like a filming. Um, it was so awesome. We got to go like see completely behind the scenes. Do you remember what show at all that was filming? I think, or? I think it was um, where they have a musical guest. Uh, all that? All that. I think it was all that. And they had Hip Hop Parade. Oh, hey. <laughs> that was the musical guest. I mean, it was really fun. What an unforgettable experience. I mean, truly, it's it's like something out of a movie. Just having your entire school taken over, transformed, and being made a celebrity for a day. I, that's so crazy. It's not <laughs> ending. It's not ending. I was saying I was at the brunch this morning with my girlfriends and my, my, a lot of people aren't from here, you know, down here anymore. And they're like, oh, you know, we're sitting with somebody famous. I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> the town hero. <laughs> my husband, like we moved down here and he was talking with like another um, co or uh, like just a colleague and he's like oh yeah you know the nickelodeon girl that's the wife <laughs> <laughs> was there anybody who wasn't there that you would have liked to have been there from nickelodeon you, you know i don't think so because we were like starting to transition into the mtv world you know like we were we were the oldest that i think that you can do the contest you know like that's where they the limit they set because you're starting to transition out of that childhood stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, back then I was so shy and I just thought, oh, I wanted to be an actress and this is going to be the way I'm going to make it, you know, like that <laughs> right. stuff. And I'm like, maybe I didn't take the right opportunities, but I'm good. I'm good. You know, <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be discovered. <laughs> no way. Who knows? Who knows? Now I'm talking to you guys. You just never know. Keep that spirit of, holy cow, like, you just never know. You gave me a lot of wonderful pictures that I can share, and I was going through some of these, and which some we've already talked about uh, because there was you had mentioned there was the the bowling, and for those of you who are listening, it was one of those. It was actually on what would you do, where it was one of those giant, almost looked like a wired bowling ball that a person could sit inside and then use them as the the bowling ball towards giant bowling pins, and they also used it in uh, Wild and Crazy Kids. But the thing that surprised me the most, which I had no clue about, was the wall of stuff. Because I knew I knew these guests or these celebrities had been on there because we've seen from the commercials. But what would you do? Never got any airtime or mention in any of the commercials. And um, and it wasn't in any of the publicity photos either that you see on newspapers and things. And um uh, and what would you do was so synonymous with Nickelodeon Studios that I had no idea that they even included it with anything that toured outside of the studio. So to see that they had the wall of stuff there is really cool to me. And the fact that your teacher was pied from it as soon as she opened it, which just is it's perfect for what they would do. I'm I'm so like this. I am so giddy just to know that they did this. That's so fun to me. The ball was funny because the math teacher got real dizzy in there and he was actually a little bit mad, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, like, look, how high she, got. she got so high. This woman was such a nice lady. 
but she got totally, totally pied. And then they did this thing with like the. I was gonna ask what that, what that was. What's the story with that? I'm not really sure. My my daughter asked me the same thing. I think they were in a giant high chair and they just threw stuff at them. Like, do you remember that game? I think I sort of vaguely do. And the lunch menu. Come and get it. Yeah, I, I don't recall a specific Double Dare episode with it. Do you think I was horrified? Yes, yes. The answer was yes. Yeah. <laughs> hold, my, hold my hand and look into my eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh. This is in front of my whole soul. My <laughs> was right. You are doing it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> there he is. Look, here he is. Hold on. There's Mr. Burton. He is the best. Oh, Mark, oh, there's man. Mark Wiener, and I don't know what they're doing in this boat. Yeah, he he did uh, he did a character called Captain Bob. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. He did Captain that on Wienerville. Uh, that was part of his lives that he would do before he started Wienerville. But uh, that was one of his favorite characters. He usually would have somebody with a bucket off to the side, and he would al always say, "Oh, here comes a tidal wave," and then somebody would oh, just throw the. You totally jogged my memory. I remember that now. Manny, uh, one of my co-hosts, uh, he asked, because he loves Mark Wiener, and he loves Wienerfeld, he asked if you remember, did Mark also bring his puppet, Boney? I think he did. On that bus, I think I remember that that being there. I think uh, when we were talking to Mark, he said he was, he was at almost all of them, right, for the Nick Takes Over Your School? He was at several of them for a few years. Yeah. I th I don't remember when his last one was. I think his last one may have been 96. I don't know. Maybe 97. I don't fully recall. But he, he did at least three. I feel like Pete and Pete were there, but they went because we live in, you know, Florida and it's, uh, we have nice beaches and I, they went to the beach and one of them, I think, oh, somebody got bad, bad sunburns so bad they couldn't come. Oh, yeah, that might have been Mike. That part was Probably, in all honesty, I think that very beginning on the bus was my favorite part. This I was going to ask what, what your favorite that. was. It, yeah. It was like, if I'm really thinking about everything, like, because it was a, it was a very, for, 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 it was a lot, a lot going on, you know, very exciting, but it's like way out of a normal comfort for zone. And the bus ride there, that one, and they were like very, like, Everyone was excited, and I don't know. That was just, and it was also just you. Yeah, you and all of them. Yeah, in a tight bus space, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then we got you just open those doors. You're like, holy cow! Everybody is everyone. The whole school was outside, and it was a lot. And the whole day, you know, interview, 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 interview. So very cool. Though. You know, you get used to it. After a while, and then you're like, "Good person, where are you?" Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for my next interview. By the end of the day, <laughs> you're a, a classic celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk earlier about, about Green Day, and it ended up being all for one. And yeah, the serenade. But was the how do you feel the class handled all all of the rest? Like, were they happy with all for one, even though it wasn't Green Day? I don't know. I feel like everyone's like too busy making fun of me a little bit about that serenade. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people complained about that day. I'm going to be honest. I feel like it was just like a fun day. And like, no one's like, oh, this was, oh, the only thing that was bad was that, that rain. That was really a damper. Because I have a lot of friends like in the eighth grade and like the other grades. And that was not the same experience for them. So, but but I do know that like people were running around the school, like jumping into the classrooms, like throughout the day. Like I didn't get to experience any of that. And I know that was going on, like disruption, you know, just like that commercial sets they are going to do, like they are doing that stuff. Like it is not, they are, they were not lying. This was like back when, you know, people did what they said they were going to do. I don't know. Yeah, the commercials seem like are sounding like they lived up to the experience. But <laughs> it, it was like that. And because my friends told me I didn't get to experience that part. But so there's that whole other part of it. That's what I mean. I needed a little partner in crime to tell you about like the other side. The the other <laughs> exactly, right. 
Next year is the 30th year, I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, we've got more to talk with Jennifer about. I've got a few more questions, and then we also have our segment at the end of the episode. But before we get to that second half, we're going to take a quick, we're going to take a recess. We're going to go to lunch and have some recess and collect ourselves. So see what all is going on in the world of Splat Attack. We'll be back in just a few minutes and see what else Jennifer has to share. We'll be right back. Nick takes over your school is brought to you by Post Fruity and Cocoa Pebble cereals and Cheetos Paws, the cheese flavored snack. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of Splat Attack. If you are enjoying this episode, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, make sure to get that notification bell. If you are listening on a podcast app, please leave us a review. These very simple reports on our report card help keep the YouTube algorithms happy. If you're looking for some fun extracurricular activities after school, then why don't you check out our Patreon? Go to patreon.com slash splatattack to check out some bonus mini-sodes that come out every Friday, along with slime streams twice a month, early access to our episodes, and more. So check us out over at patreon.com slash splatattack. School is in session, which means you've got to have the right uniform. And you can get some cool, sweet 90s uniforms over on our bonfire. Go to bonfire.com slash store slash splat attack store with hyphens in between, where you can get a shirt with our new logo for the season on there, along with some of our more popular ones like the Simmer Down with Stick Stickly or the Roll the Credits from Roundhouse along with the Physical Challenge shirt from Double Dare. We got quite a bit of stuff. Bonfire.com slash store slash Splat Attack store with Ivans in between. Only a couple of months left and we will be in Splatcon. Splatcon is going to be over in L.A., October 19th and 20th. Make sure to get your tickets. When you do, make sure to use the code ATTACK10 to get 10% off of your tickets or use code ATTACK25 to get $25 off of your hotel bundle. We will be there. Hope you will be too. Tune in next time, Slimesters, as we journey into the musical world of Nick Jr. with a special 30th anniversary of Allegra's Window with some of the cast and crew. You will only find the retro riffic action here on Splat Attack. Now back to Snick as Nick takes over our school. All right, well, I am now tired from running around through the Guts gym. I gotta ask. Because I know you said you get to run through it uh, as many times as you want, but what was how how much of it was really guts? Because guts, you had to have the bungee cord system to be you know really able to do guts. What kind of obstacle course things did they have there? Do you recall any of it? I think it was the same. I think the beginning was underneath the bungee cords and. I think, oh man, I really can't remember all of that, but I know I did, I did good at that. So. <laughs> no, yeah, I feel like it was, I feel like it was legit the same because I used to watch that show, and so I was ready, I was ready to attack it. They dragged the aggro crag all the way out there. Oh gosh, a picture of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the pictures because you had sent me quite a few and looking at the ones that were in the yearbook uh there were a couple for those of you who are listening and, and aren't able to see it uh it looks like there were a couple that were that they had the elastic jungle is what they would call it on the show which is what jennifer was talking about uh it looked like it was it was the obstacle course for like extreme baseball and, and games like that, where it was quite literally an obstacle course, where you had the wall that they had to climb up on top of. Uh, they had the the rope ladder, essentially, that they would have to climb up and probably a slide or something. Or a, a, I'm assuming maybe a, a pad on the other side that they got to jump off into. Uh, I didn't see a picture of that, but that's traditionally what what they would do on guts. So I'm assuming that's what was there. No inflatable kayak uh, pool kind of situation. No, I don't remember that one there. That was cool. If it didn't get rained out, they probably could have just had to go down around the swamp and then back. 
It was. They did have that. They did have that big bag you jumped in. That was the best part. Okay. Man, you're really. My brain is starting to remember all this stuff. <laughs> Just lots of study, lots of research, and and hearing stories from others. But uh, Jordy, do you? I've I've got I've got more questions. But uh, do you have any questions, Jordy? Well, I mean, yeah, I would think my first is like, so how much was left behind? You kind of touched on this with like the plaques and everything, but how much was left behind at the school? Like how much of an impact? I know you said like years and years later, it's not there anymore, but do you remember just lots of Nickelodeon stuff left at the school afterwards or? No, not really. I don't remember ever seeing that video library. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> no green slime stuck to the, the basketball court or anything it like that? So, <laughs> it was so one of those things like you're so famous and then afterwards it was like you could just go back to your regular life so it was so weird but then I don't know it's just like now it feels like it's all coming back I don't know mm -hmm. well no because that that was such a dynamic day that the entire school got to experience and that's such a unique experience that the entire the entire country of children wanted this to happen and so few exactly yeah. got to experience it uh, i mean let alone it's the grand myth for the, so many kids yeah <laughs> let alone the grand prize winner but even though you got to experience something so few people have everyone else in your school still got to experience something and it was it, it was something that was completely unforgettable so whenever you, yes, I completely understand what you're saying whenever you say that you were very popular for a, a period of time, but then once it was done and you have to get back into life, life just takes over again. Takes back over. Mm -hmm. And and you had said before we started the episode, you had moved away and you've recently moved back and now your daughter is going to the same school in the same grade uh that you won nick takes over your school and now all these people probably close to your age or people who were there to experience it in some form whether it was on the news or anything like that and people are people get nostalgic for things like that i'm going through anyone going through their old school again will bring back memories uh both good and bad and then being able to go through the walls that I got to experience this one very special thing. And now parents are, are who got to experience it are going through again with their kids. And yeah, it's going to be brought up again. And, uh, and it's especially with the 30th anniversary, just next year, it's people are going to remember it. Just mm -hmm. next year. We should definitely slime it again. Let's bring it back. <laughs> the fourth episode. <laughs> oh man, that would be so great. Going along with with that though, because we were just talking about the the fame that you experienced for a whole five minutes beforehand, before this was all announced, were you one of the popular kids? Were you one of the kids that was just in the back and stayed away from people and had a closer knit of, of a closer tighter group of friends? Definitely. I have my little tight girl group and we we're just cruising, cruising through middle school, right? And then thrust into this world and was completely overwhelmed. Oh, I still love you, my friends. I swear, I swear. You know, <laughs> like and now I can't even remember how long it was because you're like, when did you find out? And then it happened. I don't know. I would like And to I'm asking for details that I I know are lost through time. It's just a, a you might remember if we start talking about it, but that's okay. People will remember if I ask the right people, I know I can get the answer. Oh, uh, your your sisters, you have do you remember some of the things that they shared with you that they got to experience? I mean, I told, I mean uh, my yeah, my middle sister just told me today because I was like, oh, you should get the other, you know, another side from the little sister standpoint. Oh, I was looking for the yearbook to try to find the, and I was like, do you have the yearbook? But then she was too young to be there yet to have one, and so um, she told me that when we were at Nickelodeon Studios, she 
she said I was making everybody sign all the all the things with my name. Put extra ones in there, but I don't really remember that happening. I think, I think we were like in and out of there, but that's the only story I heard from her. They all they got to come. I mean, my little baby sister was a lot younger than me. You know, I, there's some pictures of her in there. I know I don't have all of them, but. Yeah, I'd imagine that that'd have to be something I'd make it into your yearbook for that year, right? This big make it was too late event. that year. It was in the next year, but since we were second graders, we still got it in the eighth grade yearbook. Yeah, because it was in it was in April, and we're done in May, so they probably already had that thing in production, you know. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Those eighth graders really got really got the bad end of the deal. I tell you, they they didn't get to be there. They didn't get the yearbook picture, but. I have really good friends that this is like a big good memory for them. Now, uh, one of our uh, Gakoids is what we call our patrons. One of our Gakoids, Chris, had asked, did your school cafeteria serve any special food for that day? Or was there anything that was catered? McDonald's, Chuck E. Cheese? They might have done that because I think that they have the... I never went in the cafe. I told you I had a spread, right? Like, I'm not but i do believe that they had something special in that cafeteria i i just don't i never went in i just never went over there i told you i was in the guts obstacle course and over there, over there the first, it was like a total, totally different experience for me than like the pe the other children like at the school yeah you're the celebrity for the day experience they're just lucky to be a part of everything experience <laughs> I suspect, and and Jordy, I think you you hit the nail on the head. I suspect they may have catered with uh, McDonald's because I know they partnered with McDonald's later, and they also partnered with Chuck E. Cheese. But I think that was in the late nineties. But at this point, M McDonald's and Nickelodeon were doing a lot of promo stuff together. The because Mick they, World stuff, right? The, yeah, the Mick World, and they had the um, Big Help, where they were submitting their ballots for that, and they were also doing some of the the Nick uh, Kids Choice Awards, where they would try to do that little tie in. So I I suspect at this point if they did if they catered it, which I'm sure they did. Nick or treat too also had it. Oh yeah, had Nick or treat. M McDonald's and Nickelodeon did a lot together at that time. But again, that's yep. pure speculation. Besides me, killed McDonald's and kids' relationships. <laughs> I don't remember what the food was like. I don't remember if it was McDonald's. It just looked delicious all day long, all day. <laughs> now, before we started recording, you were pointing out your shirt and how everybody had said it. For those of you who can see my screen, this was the front. So she's got uh, Elisa Reyes over here and Phil Moore over here. But the thing that makes me laugh the most is how huge <laughs> Mark Wiener signed his name on the back. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most the John prominent. Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious to me. But that's so cool. I love that so much. Yeah, I love the shirts. The shirts are the coolest part. Different shirts for every every year. Uh, yeah. And you got the cool green year. That's I mean that's one of the most iconic ones. I love it. It was so good. They slimed. I mean, it was great. Like. And, and, you know, like the teacher, everybody was having fun. It was, except for the math teacher. He did not like that bowling ball. Like, <laughs> he did not. <laughs> he was the one that I, only person I heard complain, but I can't, I can't fault him. He probably felt very nauseous. Jordy, I'm going to pick your brain because I, not, not to sound bad, Jennifer, but I, I will be surprised if you know this. I hope you know this. If you don't, I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to share the screen so you can see this, Jordy. Maybe you have an idea because some of these pictures that she shared with us, which again, I will share on screen for the, uh, the viewers are slimesters. I knew everything except one thing. I have never seen this thing ever in the history of Nickelodeon. I have no idea what in the world this thing, thing is and <laughs> i now have to find out what this thing is 
So hang on a sec. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> and this was right when they were presenting that check that is behind her right now. This is when they were presenting this to her. What is that? <laughs> Who is that? What is that TV thing? Yeah, exactly. Who is that? Is that? Did you have like a school mascot who was a TV? Definitely not. We're, we're the fans. <laughs> no, no. That would be a um, crazy football mascot if it was oh. a TV. Why are you here at the game? Go home and watch TV. I don't know. Maybe it was something with Collier County. You know, you never know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, is that the mayor who's up on the stage with you guys? Probably. I mean, what? What 13-year-old knows what the mayor looks like? I don't know who those people are. No, I have no idea who that is. I, I, I would think maybe the, like if maybe there was a news network there. That be, I mean, I can't. It looks like he's wearing a hat, too, which is making it more confusing to me. It would be funny if this <laughs> is like the, it'd be funny if this is like the humanoid version of Face from Nick Jr. Oh, my gosh. That's grown-up Face. Yeah, that's a hyper-realism Face. That's what it looks like in real life. It's not, <laughs> but it'd be hilarious. <laughs> that's the preschool hour. That's who they send in. <laughs> oh gosh, like that's oh. that's nightmare. Feel. No, I've never seen that. That's crazy. That's a uh... gosh. What it reminds me of is something like McGruff the Crime Dog or something like. It's like one of those P PSA characters, and uh, maybe like your local news network had a a mascot. <laughs> Because I, I I saw that just like an hour before we started, and I didn't get a chance to do any backstory. It's like but, one of these uh, kids is not like the other. Last, <laughs> last minute picture. We didn't get to address it, but that shirt and the check is not the only thing you got from Nickelodeon. What else did you get? Oh man! Well, I I'm, I'm sitting in my chair. They got me this nice director's chair. That I, oh wow i used it basically my entire you know childhood life that's my desk chair and it's still in good shape yeah it's still great shape i know don't make things like they used to you know my office chair i've broken like three office chairs in six years that thing from 90 96 95 is still in good shape the amount of times i washed it and it came right right back in my memory how to put it back together and it was something else yeah it's actually quite comfortable what else did i get i got a watch um nickelodeon watch oh man i probably got so many things she got like the Nickelodeon productation, like the, uh, the the shampoos and the. Uh, I don't think they were doing the shampoo, but they de they were definitely doing GAC. Yeah, still doing GAC, obviously. Yeah, maybe they don't want to give GAC out to eighth graders or seventh graders. Did you have a favorite celebrity that you got to hang out with? Not really. No, I don't remember really hanging. It was just like a wild day where I could do whatever I want. You know, I, it was. I don't know. I'm telling it was like it was so quick, quick. It went by fast. Right. Really fast. But then long, because at the end of the day, you know, you're like exhausted, yeah. Tired, but sad. You know, it's like Christmas on Don't let it end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas on yeah. steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about uh Keenan? I mean, you said Keenan was there. What was it uh, He was, was there? I mean, I don't I don't really remember talking too much to the celebrities, honestly. I don't really, I feel like I was, I was being interviewed a lot by a lot of lo like local news stations. And it was like a lot of that. I don't even know what I did with my whole day. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I was on that guts course all day. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it, and then we were in, it, it just never stopped because then we got to go to the universal trip was cool like that extra they didn't know we were coming it was like one of those things we showed up and then we're like hey i'm on the tv thing in the line and can i go <laughs> come in and they're like oh <laughs> yes that's <laughs> me yes. that's cool that's <laughs> me so it was like <laughs> that's me and i need to they like did the tour all around in there showed us like we were like in the writing, like where they, I mean, it was really cool. That's just so cool. That's probably something you could only do if you lived in uh, Florida near the park. I feel like that was almost, it, it wasn't better, but it was like very comparable, you know. 
maybe because I'm like more of a shy person so that was more like my speed like no one no one was giving me too much attention at that point yeah, it's not no pressure it's just a theme park at that point or not everyone at your school watching everything you do yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly now going on the um the check because you got a thousand dollar check do you remember some of the things you got with that did you save it or did you spend some of it just because you can college tuition <laughs> i hate to tell you but the government takes a bunch of that winning you know yeah. oh yeah <laughs> i remember that part because i was like really but um no i i feel like i probably put it away for savings knowing Knowing the child that I was, so responsible. <laughs> Green Day concerts. That would be great. <laughs> Still to this day, I think that would be great. <laughs> the last question I had, at least for as far as this goes, and I, I think I know the answer already. Do you think Nickelodeon should bring back Nick Takes Over Your School? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What are they waiting for? I mean, it's 30 years next year. Be a great opportunity. I mean, that's what I'm saying. And then get your get your daughter in to experience it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Could you imagine her winning <laughs> two, two generations in a row? <laughs> yes, it sounds perfect. Jordy, do you have any other questions before you go to our segment? Oh, man. I mean... I think we've covered everything I can think of. I and mean, you've shared the pictures of all was there. So, but I mean, I was curious if any of the, like they brought any of like, they, cause they had like Pascot Doug one year and they had like a giant inflatable Ickis one year. We didn't, have those. we didn't have any of those. Maybe because we were too old, I think. Yeah, I think maybe they judge it by the age. That, that would make sense. Cause if you looked at our crew that was there, they were like the more older, I mean, they kind of, just a tad bit older than me those celebrities mostly right other than the other than the you know the ones running the shows we're all kids yeah that's what nick was all about yeah exactly they were fun 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 all right well we have our final segment for the episode so we are going to check out this or that this or that this or that time to play this or that okay so the way this or that works jennifer is i'm just going to give you two topics these are all school related it has nothing to do with nick takes over your school but since we're kind of a back to school episode these are all school themed and uh you can pick one or the other pick both just a personal preference thing and and jordy and i will play as well but which did you prefer Junior high or high school? Uh, high school. Take a laugh. Would you? Well, why high school? Uh, I guess I had my car, and uh, I don't know. I think junior high was just awkward, awkward times. Yeah. Jordy, what about you? I, I'm going the other direction. I'm going to say junior high. Take um, a laugh. As cool as getting a car was in high school, I think it was uh, just this transitional period before you have all the pressure that comes in high school that you can still enjoy in middle school um junior high so yeah i'm good with like the junior high middle school era i think that was a, the better time for me i'm gonna say high school Take a laugh. Uh, because i i didn't get i didn't have a car in high school i didn't get a car until after i graduated i, I had one available to me i just never did yeah you know, learn to drive but uh I, much like Jennifer, I tried to be the good kid, and I was the goody two-shoes. I was the teacher's pet. And um, when I was in school prepping for college, I didn't take any fun classes the first, all throughout junior high and throughout the first couple years of high school. So that way, when it was my senior year, I had two classes that I had to take because you, know, you, you had to take math and you had to take English. Those two you have to do. Everything else, I've met all my credits. I've met all the criteria that I need for college. So I can, my entire senior year was all just fun classes of anything I wanted. And that was the most fun year. I, I had so much fun. I like art four. I got to run around the high school with a video camera and learn how to do video editing because that's where it all started. Uh, so much fun. 
it was a fun, fun year, and I'll never forget that one. I wish I could go back and do that year again. Uh, Jennifer, if you had to pick between a football game or a basketball game, either to watch or be in, doesn't matter, which would you prefer? Football. Take a lap. To watch? Every, everything. Who's your, who's your team? The Florida Gators, the Miami Dolphins. There you go. <laughs> you know we got the hardest seasons coming up. Oh man, for me, I, uh, I think I'd have to go with basketball. I think I have the most nostalgia for basketball when I was younger. Um, I never really got to into football, so yeah, basketball. basketball. What team? Like, oh, it's it's all about nostalgia for me. So the Chicago Bulls, because that's what I always associated uh, Michael Jordan with. <laughs> Uh, neither is my answer. Uh, I, I wasn't a sports person. I wasn't a sports person. I'm, I'm still not. Uh, just never got into it. But if I did have to pick between these two, uh, I would say basketball Take for the lap. pure reason of I remember basketball being everywhere in pop culture in the 90s. And Michael Jordan was really cool. I knew who so many of these basketball players were, and I never watched basketball. Because I knew Charles Barkley, I knew Shaquille O'Neal, I knew Sean Kemp, I knew uh, uh, Larry, Larry Bird. Uh, I, I knew so many of these people, and I never watched a single basketball game. <laughs> but th they just exuded pop culture at the time, and, and it was yeah, kind of cool. into all culture. Yeah, they were like McDonald's promotions, and Space Jam. Uh, I mean, it was it was everywhere. I mean, it was, basketball was so big uh, a part of everything. I mean, and baseball had a huge popularity at that time too, where it bled into everything. But it was more about the sport with baseball than I think it was with the actual players. Unlike Michael Jordan and the basketball players, it really they were like carrying it on their on their shoulders. Uh, Jennifer, I know that one of these options is not viable over in Florida, but if the option was presented. Which would you prefer to experience? A, a school field trip or a snow day? Oh, hmm. probably a snow day. <laughs> Take a lap! Because you didn't have snow days over in Florida. No, no, I have, a, I have a very vivid, wonderful memory of, I went to, we, in grad, in, no, undergrad, in college, we did a study abroad program in Vicenza, Italy, and, we had a lot of people from Miami down there in that studio, and when that the snow started falling, I tell you what, we were freaking out. It was awesome, making snowballs, and that was a, a big day for us. Yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna have to go the same. It's snow day all the way. I actually got to have a few snow days when I lived on the, the East Coast up in Georgia. Well, they weren't really quite snow days. They were more like ice storm days. Oh gosh, um, yeah. no. <laughs> Uh, but you still got the byproduct of a little bit of snow um, and uh, just the experience of being able to stay home, waiting for your school to get called on the news um, and be like, yeah, I don't have to go to school. And then just going outside and everything's frozen over, breaking off icicles and you know, picking up snowballs, sliding down hills. Even with like half an inch of snow, you can still get into a lot of trouble with the sled <laughs> on a grassy hill. <laughs> So I'll take Snow Day. And I mean, the, the movie Snow Day was like pivotal uh, Nickelodeon movie for me uh, growing up as well. So I think that just embodied so much of the fun. So Snow Day all the way. Field trip to a snooze. Right with that. Uh, I've been very, very fortunate to have some really cool field trips. Um, one in particular was really, really cool and I enjoyed it a lot. But there's nothing cooler like you said to wake up in the morning and then to see snow covered everywhere and hey, wow. you don't have to worry you know there's no chance that school bus is going to be making it through these back roads and um, especially over here in the, in Kentucky when the, there's a lot of back roads um, and I live just a few blocks away from my best friend and we would always load up in our snow gear and we'd go out to the golf courses that were behind our house 
and sled all day uh, and uh, sometimes using the sleds as snowboards and it would come right out from under our feet we'd build a ramp out of snow and just try to see if we could land on our feet without falling over the snow days were awesome i hate cold but if it's gonna be cold give me snow if you're not gonna give me snow warm up <laughs> i'm moving to florida uh that's what i'm saying uh jennifer the school dance or a graduation party oh graduation party take a lap did you have did you have a graduation party no i didn't oh i know jordy uh yeah i mean it's a it's a tough one i didn't go to very many school dances and i didn't have a graduation party so out of what I would want to do, I would say, you know, graduation parties look the most fun. Take a lap! Although school dances always give me flashbacks to uh, Back to the Future, every movie that ever used a school dance as a narrative storytelling device. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think graduation party. I mean, you're at the end of, you know, completing all the hard work you've done. It's, you know, there's no pressure to start up school again right away. So, yeah, uh, graduation party, it's uh I had to choose and had one. <laughs> I, we did have a graduation party uh, for for us. Um, I've been to a couple school dances and I, I didn't want to go to any more because anyone who's watched any of our show for a, a, any modicum of time, you will know that I hate most pop culture music, uh, especially pop music. And that was everywhere. Uh, in the 90s uh, the, all the the pop music i couldn't stand it and uh no no thank you on the school dances hey, but out. i did go uh, because my wife megan we were i was in college she was in high school or two years apart so i didn't go to my prom but i went to her prom and then the very next year after she graduated the prom theme was james bond and i was so angry that I couldn't go to that one. It's like, why couldn't you do that in one of the two that mm, I was so mad. But graduation <laughs> party. You. Oh yeah, I was like, yeah, they planned it. But no, the, the graduation party was a lot of fun. Uh, they they had this giant inflatable boxing ring and they gave you huge boxing gloves <laughs> that you try to knock each other down with. Sock em boppers. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they had a bunch of games like that. They had a, a mock-up fake casino where you could uh, gamble fake money just to you know do some adult things now that you're a grown-up. But and, and it was all that you got to do in the school gymnasium because they had the it was their way of one to have a party one big one one more big hurrah before you have to work for the rest of your life but but also a safe place where we know students can have a good time instead of going out and getting in trouble on graduation night and doing things that they shouldn't be doing uh, so the the graduation party was uh and I, I also remember my ex-girlfriend was there who I dated for four years and she had a new boyfriend and he and I fought each other in one of those boxing ring things. And uh, I was happy to... I, and I was thinking, watch me get my butt handed to me. Nope, that didn't happen. It, it was the other way around. And I was like, yep, that's what happens. <laughs> Honestly, he was a cool there guy. You go. And, I had, and he and I... <laughs> He, he, he was a really cool guy. Uh, I, I, I talk trash, but he was a good guy. Uh, the last question. Uh, Jennifer, would you rather watch a movie in class or hang out with friends in the gym? Oh, hang out with friends in the gym. Hang a lap! Jordy? I think I'd have to go with the same. Hang out with friends in the gym as hang cool a as a, a movie in class can be. I mean, yeah, there's nothing beats just hanging out with your friends and not having to stay quiet and entertain yourself with whatever's playing because my experience was you never Who got to knows choose the movie, movie that is right exactly a lot of the times it had to be educational to some capacity uh but i did watch teachers stretch the line with that but yeah oh yeah yeah stretch the line for that let's watch titanic <laughs> because it's historical <laughs> are you sure about that we know this is how it happens <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going with watch movies in class. Take a lap! Uh, because I, 
I'd, I'd love to hang out with my friends at the gym. But the problem with that is when we did that, we were also surrounded by people that I was really annoyed with. And a lot of the time, like I said, my friends lived really close. So we were hanging out all the time anyway. But uh, in school, I, I got to watch some really cool movies in school where they skirted that education line for a while. And then after a while, okay, what's educational about Star Wars, Lord of the Rings? <laughs> uh, what was the other one? Jurassic Park. I mean, we, we watched movies that had nothing to do with education. And then one of the classes... Jurassic Park is history. Yeah. <laughs> one of the classes I had in my senior year was film appreciation. And I got to watch movies I never would have... I, like, I watched One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in that class. I mean, in, oh, yeah. like, my parents were... living would be... in a different kind of TV world than I was thinking of. Like, we're not watching that stuff. Yeah, I, I got to watch some really cool stuff then. Maybe something in my Spanish class. Like, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, now translate. Here's a book. F figure out what they said. This is not teaching me Spanish at all. No. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. <laughs> this is teaching me confusion. All right. Well, that is going to be it for this or that. And that is also going to be it for our episode of our third Nick Takes Over Your School. But before we go, we do have a closing question for all of you Slimesters who are listening. If Nick took over your school, what Nickelodeon celebrities did you want to take over your school? You can write to us via email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com. You can DM us on all of our socials. Just look for at Splat Attack Podcast. If you have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that. The button is right down there. Click it for me. It helps us out a lot. Uh, interact with us wherever you can find us. Uh, we're, we're always happy to connect with you guys and talk with you all. Thank you again, Jennifer, for responding to my email. Yes, again, thank this you. was this this was really uh, trippy because I, all of you listening know that I, I reach out to a lot of people, and then like a year, a year and a half later, Jennifer yeah. responded to the two <laughs> the two years. She's like, "Yeah, I am that Jennifer who was the winner for this." I'm like, "Oh, hey, cool! I'm yay!" So. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this and sharing stories with us and these pictures. This is, I, I love learning things like this. And it means a lot. Yeah. To me. Thank it's you. So insight much. we couldn't get any other way. Truly, the, the insight and the the, the stories and the, the, there's a perspective from just being the winner and you know that you could never get from the commercials. And I mean, it's so cool to hear about it, especially the bus ride. That's the most curious part to me. It's like, what was that bus ride like? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> but thank you again so much for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, until our next episode, Jordy, will you help me run the studio, please? The guests have been enjoying the tour, but we need to get Game Labs up and running very soon. Aye, aye, co captain. Uh, it's mostly complete now. We just need to get some supplies. Um, I get a small inflatable pool and a, a truckload of you know, jello, applesauce, um, your green food coloring, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm picking up what you're throwing down there, Jordy. You need some uh, uh, oatmeal. Oatmeal. Oh, yeah, we got the oatmeal too. Almost forgot. Yeah, we'll have Thank to go you. grab it. some in here too. <laughs> quick, quick, quick run to the store to pick get up some, some Quakers. supplies. Because <laughs> I know a lot of 90s kids who missed the opportunity to get slime, so they're definitely in the right place for that. We'll splat you later, Slimesters. Later, Slimesters. This episode was recorded at Splat Attack Studios, in virtual home studios, though none in Florida.